introduce Ms. Shayla Carter. Um, Ms. Carter has been a member of our environment. Received state accolades for their performance. Hi. Hi, I'm Shayla Carter, and this is my senior internship presentation on applying technology in environmental science. Specifically, I'm referring to technology such as modern computer t devices. Think your computers at home, your cell phone, or even the Chromebooks we use here at school and applying it to environmental science, and teaching it in the classroom, and helping in research, and even benefiting our community. Before I get into the specifics of what I did for my project, I'd like to give an idea of why I chose the project that I did. So as Ms. King introduced me, I have been a member of my local competing Envirothon team for three years now. You can see some of the other students behind me here and on some of the other slides, and some of them are actually in the audience right now. As Ms. King said, we have been able to go through the different levels. And to give some more context, this Envirothon team focuses on learning about the environment and being able to identify plants, animals, and even government agencies and what they do. Similarly, I've also been always interested in working with computers. I love the idea of how you can learn all of the different base components and put them together to make something new, whether it be in 3D modeling, video game design, or even computer software engineering. So with that in mind, I wanted to marry my two interests together to create a project that I could be proud of and something that I was really interested in. So for my research, I went into how technology can be used to benefit environmental science classes. For my internship, I got to have some professional experiences and how it's used in research. And for my community service, I got to work with the Envirothon team to create a project that would benefit our community. Now, the last part of my overall project to actually come together was my research. I wasn't sure what I wanted to focus on in my synthesis, synthesis paper. I knew I wanted to do something, however, in benefiting how we can use technology to help in the classroom. But I needed a better focus than that. So I got to interview Ms. Carrie Seltzer, who's a member of the iNaturalist staff team. iNaturalist is an app and a website where you can go and identify plants and animals and other, and other organisms in the natural world around you. This will also give you information, such as where they're found. If they're an animal, you can hear their calls and see other observations that people have made of the same organism. In speaking with Ms. Carrie Seltzer, I learned quite a bit about how a naturalist has been used. Specifically, she mentioned both research applications and more importantly, events called bio blitzes, which are actually large community events where anyone, whether you're elderly or even a young child, can go out and try to identify as many different plants and animals as they can. It doesn't matter if you're not well versed in the flora and fauna around you. The app actually comes with a programmed device that allows you to take a photo of any animal or plant that you see, and it will give you a suggested an identification of what it is. With that in mind, I decided to focus my synthesis paper on how we can use technology to benefit environmental science classes, specifically those that don't have many resources. To give a few statistics, on the national average in the United States, states that as many as one in five teachers or as many as one in three in more poverty-ridden schools may be working in an area of expertise that they are not familiar with. This is especially the case when you have teacher shortages, when you can't find a teacher who is well-versed in the area that they are expected to be teaching by their school. So I wanted to see how technology can be used as a crutch. And I found that programs just like iNaturalist and even online websites such as the Gizmo sites, which many teachers use, allow you to have a replacement for these interactive projects, whether they get you outside or remain in the classroom when you don't have other materials to use. If my research was the last portion of my project to come together, my internship was the first part. I met with Ms. Ann Carter-Witt over the summer, and I got to speak with her and work with her group. She works for the DGMR, or Department of Geological Mineral Resources here in Virginia, which is a subset of the DMME, or Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy. The first day of my internship was mostly about learning instead of a hands-on experience. I was introduced to what Anne did in her daily duties, and I was able to learn about how she interacted with clients and learn a bit about her coworkers, some of whom actually had students who were part of the governor's school program or the summer residential governor's school, which I found to be a fun coincidence. 
On the first day, I attended a training taught by her where exp she explained exactly what we did. In this case, it was outlining landslides. Now, when a landslide occurs, it's going to rip the top layer of the soil away from the earth, and it will leave an impression left on that area of landscape. When that occurs, when you go back on maps, you can actually see, or through satellite and aerial imagery, where the area has been impacted the most. And you can use that to draw these outlines, which can then be used in research. You can see right there that she is explaining a small area of land that she had done on a much older landslide, so it's more difficult to see. Unfortunately, the power actually went out in the building around noon, so I wasn't able to finish the first day of my internship in the office. Instead, I went home with, the, with a stack of research to do. I learned more about what the DGMR focused on, and more importantly, I was actually prompted to read up on Hurricane Camille, which occurred in 1969. This would be important because on the second day, I was actually doing new research on creating landslides, that, on creating outlines for landslides that had occurred in Hurricane Camille. This is, this is actually something new that hasn't been done before. I was continuing their project at the time, but the issue was that the only current landslide outlines in that basin I was working in were made by the USGS, or the United States Geological Survey, several years ago. And because of that, they were very outdated and were not very consistent with the actual outlines of the landslides. You can see that these green spots here and here are the marked heads of the landslides or where they began. Then the blue outlines are the outlines that I am currently outlining in these photos, and the pink ones are ones that I am not currently working on. This was definitely a learning experience for me in this case because I had never done anything of this sort with actually working with landslides. But at the same time, I was able to find that it was very similar to some of my other hobbies, like painting, because the actual program that we were using, ArcGIS, is very similar to things like Photoshop, or to an extent, even similar basic programs for your phone or even your computer, like MS Paint. Once I got through my internship, I needed to figure out what I wanted to do for my community service. So I got to work with Ms. Kimberly Jankaitis. She's a chemistry teacher here at our high school, but I know her more as the coach for our Envirothon team. Since I worked with maps and landslides during my internship, and I worked with benefiting the classroom in my research paper, I wanted to put these two things together to create a community service project that would use what I learned about mapping and statistics to benefit students in the classroom. So I was able to get to work with the Envirothon team on the first part of our project, which was going out into the area behind our school, which is filled with trails, which are wonderfully maintained by our turf classes, to actually create a map or a data table of all the different species of trees found around our school, how common they are, and what areas they're found in. This can actually be used as a learning tool in the classroom because these trees can be specialized to different environments and can lead to a lot of questions. Why are some here and why aren't others? Why are they growing in specific environments? Or why are they thriving better than others? However, once I had that done, I knew that I wanted to do something bigger and better for our school just based off of that. So I downloaded this app called Avenza Maps. I would never used it before, so I had to go through quite a few tutorials online to figure out exactly how it works. But in short, it allows you to, just using your phone, create a trail map as you walk. And it includes the hazards on the trails and the lengths of the trails, along with their walking times. By the end of this semester, I'm actually working with the carpentry class here at our school to create trailhead kiosks, which are these kiosks set up at the start of trails, which give information on the trails, which is especially helpful for students and other community members who don't commonly use the trails but would like to get out there in nature. However, while it's all fun to talk about these kiosks that I would like to have implemented, I can't actually bring them in to show you. So I'd like to ask you to pull out your smartphones if you have them and open up to your camera app or a QR code scanner if you have it on your phone. You can hold it up to the screen and it'll pull up a link to Google Maps, which will open up an interactive trail map which will bring you to all of the information on the trail so far. This trail map will be the basis for a higher quality map that will be used and put onto the kiosks. 
So with that in mind, I'd like to go into how this impacted me. I definitely learned quite a bit about working with maps and the environmental science side of things and how we can use technology to make it better. But I don't think I want to pursue environmental science as any sort of career. However, I would like to go into computer science as my major. I'm not sure where yet since I'm still waiting on acceptance letters, but I have figured out quite a few areas where I think I would love to go into as a career. So with that in mind, I'd like to thank all of the people who helped me in this project, and I'll now open the floor to any questions you might have. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, part of the reason why we are working on those maps in the first place is so that later on we can figure out exactly where these areas have been impacted and figure out the common causes between them. But it's funny that you mentioned how we can predict landslides because during my internship, I mentioned that the power went out. The power actually went out on that day because there was some extreme weather happening at the time. And while I was there, it was very funny to be sitting in a room of people who worked with landslides with all of them basically pulling out their notes and saying, look at all this rainfall we're going to get. Do you think it's enough with the slopes in this area that we're going to get some landslides? That'd be so cool, we could go out and see them. Obviously, the destruction caused by landslides is not as cool, but it is always interesting to have a learning opportunity in the field. And in fact, the research that I did there um, with creating the outlines for the landslides is, um, or was actually used as part of a training activity for geologists out in the field, because they were able to pull up the maps on their mobile devices and have a aerial view of the landslides that they were looking at on the ground, since it's much easier to see things from a larger perspective than when you're walking. <laughs> 